that has been um, uh, submitted by Councillor Yanni Johansson, so I'll hand over to Councillor Johansson to introduce the notice of motion. Yeah, thank, thank you. Um, and I've just sent um, councillors um, some photos. I don't know if staff can put the photos on the screen or is that going to be too, too tricky? Um, I'll just speak to the notice of motion, which is um, effectively, um, as, as councillors may be aware, the rural land in the Kennaway um, farm site between Tunnel Road, um, Ferry Road and the Heathcote Apawahau River was rezoned into industrial um, as part of a plan change in, um, prior to the earthquake in 2010. Um, and since that time there's been a number of activities that have happened, uh, but um, quite surprisingly to local residents was the emergence of a, a number of shipping containers, a shipping container storage depot in effect that has had a, a huge amount of disruption on um, uh, the visual amenity, uh, on uh, being able to sleep in terms of noise and vibration, uh, and also concern around um, the environmental impacts. And you can see um, a photo that pretty much sums up um, the concern that people are expressing um, when they wake up and um, see that basically blocking the entire view of the Port Hills. But really today, um, I'm simply, simply seeking council to agree um, to the notice of motion that effectively asks um, to get an advice or report from council staff over what, what could be done in terms of district plan changes. Um, and it's just um, effectively the reason for doing that is um, it, it seems um, apparent to me that um, this was probably a, a type of activity that wasn't really anticipated um, and it may be that um, having a greater degree of buffer between residential um, and this sort of activity is important um, and therefore it would be good to get advice on what could be done. Um, you know, this is, I mean, just um, at a recent council meeting, we adopted the Lower Heathcote Guidance Plan and you can see through here wonderful views of the Port Hills um, and recommendations looking at um, examining land use along the lower Heathcote, um, Apawahau River um, in terms of planning control. So I urge councillors to support this today. Um, this is um, simply seeking um, to get this issue on the work program of our staff um, so that we can look at what could possibly mitigate some of the uh, concerns that have been raised by local residents. And again, I'll, just to note, I've sent you two, two of the residents who have sent pretty detailed information about the impact that it's having on them. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do I have a seconder for the motion? Uh, Jake McClellan. Uh, any questions for the um, person who's uh, moved the motion? Um, questions of clarification only. Um, Tim and then Aaron. Um, thanks, Yanni. Um, with the, the second email, or the first email you sent through with regards to a wee bit of information attached to the photo, the, the, um, one of the concerns isn't just visual, it's also noise. What are the noise? What are the work restrictions on, on the Kennaway Business Park? Do you know? Yeah, I, it, it's a it's a tricky one because there's there's controls around noise limits at certain times of the day, um, and I do um, have some information that staff have sent through on that, um, but fair to say it's fairly permissive um, and. Um, you know, one of the one of the issues is um, it's the vibration from the containers being dropped um, or loaded, I should say, uh, as much as you know a really loud loud noise. So it's the shaking and the vibration. Um, but I can, yeah, I, I can send that through um, to you. There, there is some controls, but you know, I guess the point of asking the advice from staff is: are those controls um, sufficient enough to? mitigate the effects that it has on people, particularly in a residential area. The other thing to note is that a lot, some of the area that is in close proximity is rezoned medium residential. So, you know, it can have more intensive housing being built. Um, and so obviously there's a, there's a concern that when you do get um, more housing, and I think the reverse sensitivity effects have been raised through 
some of the consultation on the intensification plan change. Because the, 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 the inland port, I mean, it's got residents, resident, residences all around that area, so I'd be interested with the count, uh, when we get in front of staff to ask a few questions. Yep. yep. Aaron. Yeah, so just on, because there's the list of all the things there, but that land is industrial land, um, and as you know, I've got a business around the corner, so I know it relatively well. And the, the they're allowed to build to 20 metres on that site, I thought, uh, which would be those containers are 12 and a half metres high currently. So the, a building could go beyond even the edge of your photo, which would certainly block views. Isn't that what that area is zoned for? Uh, yeah, I, did, I, did, I don't... Um, there's a... As I understand it, the staff are looking at what's permitted under the industrial zoning. There, there is an um, outline development plan. And um, for counts, I mean, I don't know how familiar councils are with the planning process. The outline development plan gives you a kind of general overview of what's going to be done. But it's not, it doesn't go down to the level of detail in terms of subdivision. Th this site in particular does have an 11 metre height restriction um, along it. Um, and that was um, in the outline development plan. But staff are looking at um, the individual aspects of this case. I guess that the more broader um, concern is around shipping container storage um, and the movement and you know where you've got store shipping container depots, the impact that that can have if it's in close proximity to residential. And that's really what it's asking staff to consider looking at whether we have sufficient protections in our district plan. And it may be that we do, but certainly from the feedback from the local residents in this area, they were quite shocked to not have any notification, for example, um, and to just see it sort of appear overnight. So, yeah. And, and then my, my follow-up to that is, so will the report come back have the environmental implications of if we don't allow shipping container ports in that particular area, that then like they'd go to Rolleston or wherever that that would have. I'm sure, impact. yeah, Aaron. I'm sure when staff do district plan, when they provide district plan advice, they do a section 32 analysis, and that goes through the different benefits um, from a both from a um, cultural, environmental, and economic um, aspect. So, you know, I'm, I have no doubt that that would be exactly the sort of thing that that staff would consider. Again, this is not saying that there should be no shipping container depots. It's just saying if it's in close proximity to residential, do we have sufficient mitigations in place to um, deal with the effects that's been created? And that is what I would expect staff to, to come back with. Right. Okay, thank you. Just just your comment then made me a little bit nervous. So there's, you're not expecting staff to do a section 32. Um, I, I, I was just trying to reassure my colleague that as part of any district plan change, staff yeah. do go through a process but to weigh up the benefits. I just, I just wonder whether we should. Yeah. I mean, you know, you'd have to have agreement of everyone, but I probably would have worded it as um, seek advice on whether changes, um, you know, should be considered to improve the district plan, it, because asking for a report and or advice. So I just want to be clear that we are not talking about um, sort of substantive advice on a plan change proposal, we're talking about them um, providing some advice on on what the council would have to do to consider that and what you would take into account. Because this isn't yeah. the top priority for our staff at the moment. The top priority for our staff are the plan changes that we're required to do um, uh, under the um, changes to the RMA and the MPSUD. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah. absolutely. You know, it, it's really just getting staff to look at the existing district planning controls around this sort of activity, um, and to provide advice on whether they're sufficient when it's in right. close proximity to residential. I think one of the things that I've observed with our district plan, and you can look at Garlands Road as well, the metal um, scrap um, activity, is that there does seem to be a bit of an issue with residential adjacent, or yeah. in this case, in close proximity. And it may be that we just need to think a little bit more about how we mitigate some of those impacts. We had exactly yeah. the same issue with the quarries um, uh, and the buffers that are required for residential developments, yeah. And we were unsuccessful to, uh, as a council in trying to get the changes that we wanted um, to our own district plan. So, um, 
it's a challenging issue, but thank you. That gives me comfort, and I'm happy to support this. So is there any debate? I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Sorry, I forgot about the people online. If anyone is outrageously opposed to this online, just let me know. <laughs> Thank you. Right, so the next item um, on the agenda um, is the uh, hearings panel report to the Council on the Wheels to Wings Papanui uh, 